At first, it may seem like the sun is burning. But it's actually not true, because the burning of our star isn't chemical combustion, it's nuclear fusion. The sun can't run out of oxygen or stop burning because it doesn't use oxygen to burn. Regular carbon combustion requires oxygen. As soon as there's no oxygen, the process of burning stops. Now imagine a candle. If you cover it, it doesn't have access to oxygen anymore, and the process of burning stops. But in nuclear fusion, the nuclei of atoms are fused together to make new bigger nuclei. Such changes cause atoms to become new elements. Nuclear fusion doesn't require oxygen or any other material altogether. You just need enough pressure or heat to squeeze the nuclei of atoms close enough for them to overcome their electrostatic repulsion and bond into one nucleus. In 2027, two teams of astronomers discovered a cloud of water floating in open space. It was the largest and farthest reservoir of water ever detected in the universe. It's a cloud of water vapor surrounding a huge black hole called a quasar, 12 billion light years away from Earth. The environment around the quasar must be unique to somehow produce such giant masses of water. It was formed by energy waves colliding hydrogen and oxygen atoms together. The cloud contains 140 trillion times the entire volume of water on our planet. It could provide each person on our planet with a planet's worth of water 20,000 times over. Wow! Even cooler, astronomers believe this water cloud appeared just 1.6 billion years later than the universe itself. Scientists consider it another demonstration that water exists throughout the universe and was present already during its early days. At the same time, before this discovery, Scientists had never found water vapor present so far back in the early universe. There is water in our home Milky Way galaxy, but most of it is frozen in ice. Not only water is floating out there in space, alcohol too. In 2009, scientists were examining a massive cloud of gas and dust in the center of our galaxy when they stumbled upon a surprise there was ethyl formate within the cloud. This chemical is responsible for the sweet flavor of raspberries. They also found one more cool region. This one was brimming with ethyl alcohol, the same type found in many beverages. At the North Pole of Saturn, a mysterious storm is raging. It's ginormous, spanning an area larger than our planet and showcasing a beautiful but baffling hexagonal pattern. No one has understood yet why the storm has such a bizarre shape. After the hexagon was first discovered in 1987, it remained hidden in darkness, up to the moment when sunlight exposed it again. Soon afterward, the Cassini spacecraft, designed to explore the Saturn system, provided a series of captivating images and even a video of the hexagonal storm. It turned out to be colossal in size. Its estimated depth is around 180 miles, and the eye of the storm is 50 times as large as the typical storm on Earth. The storm is also changing its color from blue to gold. Winds of hydrogen and ammonia surround the storm and move at more than 300 miles per hour. The storm has several centers. Some of them move clockwise, and others follow a counterclockwise direction. The largest vortex appears to be white, and it's twice larger than the standard hurricane on our planet. As for the hexagon itself, it's a jet stream made up of atmospheric gases. Experts refer to it as just a current of air and weather features. But there is one intriguing detail a vortex sitting at a higher altitude than Saturn's clouds. It looks like a large, towering structure. Saturn's auroras, triggered by the planet's magnetic field, are located atop of the hexagon, giving its appearance a mystical vibe. Astronomers have found a giant, likely active volcano near Mars's equator. It was literally hiding in plain sight. It's ancient and deeply eroded, but seems to be still functioning. 
there may even be remnants of a glacier ice near its base. That's why this discovery might indicate a promising new location to search for life, as well as a potential destination for future human and robotic exploration. The structure is still awaiting its official name. At the moment, it's referred to as the Noctis Volcano. It reaches a height of 29,600 feet and spans an impressive 280 miles across. Such a giant size indicates that the volcano has been active for a very long time. In its southeastern part, there's a thin, recent volcanic deposit, and beneath, glacier ice might still be present. At a distance of 700 million light-years away from Earth, there's a gaping hole. A blank void with no galaxies, stars, planets, or asteroids. Literally nothing. The void is a roughly spherical region about 330 million light-years across. Our home Milky Way galaxy could fit there billions of times over. That's the mysterious Boots Void. It lies in the constellation of Boots, the herdsman driving the plow around the North Pole. At first, this void had the name of the Great Nothing, but later it was given its current name. Now, we know that galaxies look like a giant web. Most of them are parts of long structures called filaments. Those wind through the cosmos, and when they meet, they form regions with a high concentration of galaxies. These regions are what we know as galaxy clusters. But between these clusters and threads, there are enormous empty voids that hardly contain any galaxies. Such voids actually make up almost 80% of the observable universe, and most of them are huge, from 30 to 300 million light-years wide. The Boots Void is one of the most massive ones. It has even earned the title of Super Void. Astronomers think it might be the result of a few smaller voids merging together. There is a diamond planet out there that orbits a star in the constellation of Cancer, completing one full rotation in a mere 18 Earth hours. The planet's scientific name is 55 Cancri E. The radius of this faraway world is twice as large as Earth's, and its mass is eight times greater. The planet is scorching hot, the temperatures on the day side reaching almost 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But the coolest thing about 55 Cancri E is that, according to some specialists, at least a third of the planet's mass could be diamond. That's the equivalent of around three masses of our home planet. Ah, sounds like big, big money floating out there in space. How about we calculate how much this planet could be worth? Ah, wait, someone has already done it. And the number is astronomical. Pun intended, of course. It's 26.9 nonillion. And if you're confused by this number as I am, that's 26.9 followed by 30 zeros. Now, for comparison, one of the most expensive diamonds on Earth ever is the Kulian. It costs a whopping $2 billion, and its original weight was a mind-boggling 3,106.75 carats. It was, and still is, the largest raw gem diamond ever found. Later, it was cut into many small diamonds. The largest of them is Kulian 1, which also goes by the name of Star of Africa. It has a carat weight of about 530. But imagine how much bigger and more expansive the diamond planet is. Nebulas are gigantic clouds of gas and dust, and some of them can have really unusual shapes, as if they were made this way on purpose. With time, gravity starts to pull these clumps of dust and gas together. They grow larger and larger, and their gravity gets more powerful. One day, this mass becomes so big that it collapses under its own gravity and forms new stars. Among some of the most beautiful nebulas out there, we must mention the Butterfly Nebula. Its wingspan is more than three light years. And the structure inside the nebula is one of the most complicated ever observed. The central star, a white dwarf, is heated to an incredible 450,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It means it formed from a giant gargantuan star, likely more than five times the size of our Sun. 
The white dwarf is surrounded by a thick disk of dust and gas at the equator. It's what probably makes the whole structure look like an hourglass or a butterfly. The ring nebula looks like a giant cloud of dust and gas surrounding an old, almost extinguished star. At first sight, it does look like a ring. But astronomers say the nebula isn't a bagel, it's a jelly-filled donut. They must be hungry. The deep space colorful object, more than 2,000 light years away from Earth, is actually a ring that wraps around a blue ball-shaped structure. Each end of the structure sticks out of the ring's opposite sides. The pillars of creation look like something out of this world. See for yourself. They're located 7,000 light years away from Earth in the Eagle Nebula. That's a young cluster of stars just 5.5 million years old. On a space scale, they're just babies. Once, the Hubble Space Telescope managed to take an image of several dark silhouettes near the nebula center. And now, you can see them with your own eyes. Those are the so-called Pillars of Creation, an active star-forming region. Look at this famous image. The blue colors represent oxygen, red is sulfur, and green means the presence of both hydrogen and nitrogen. The pillars are also bathed in the ultraviolet light coming from a nearby cluster of young stars. Unfortunately, the winds from those stars are slowly but steadily eroding the magnificent towers of gas and dust. Far out in space, a ghostly, super-ancient galaxy is floating all alone. It shines with a faint glimmer of starlight and has hardly changed for billions of years. Astronomers have no idea why it's there or how it formed. Meet DGSATI, a living fossil galaxy. It's as big as the Milky Way, but is nearly invisible because its stars are spread out incredibly thinly. But what makes the galaxy so unique is that it's sitting all alone, unlike other galaxies of this kind, which are usually found in clusters. It might mean that DGSATI was formed in a different era, probably a mere 1 billion years after the Big Bang. If it's true, the galaxy is a real living fossil. Astronomers have discovered the most massive stellar black hole ever spotted in our home Milky Way galaxy. This newly found space monster is 33 times bigger than the Sun and sits 2,000 light years away from us. Until recently, the largest stellar black hole found residing in our galaxy has been around 20 times as big as our star in terms of mass. As for the average stellar mass black hole, it's usually about 10 times as hefty as the Sun. Scientists spotted the giant black hole after a star started to wobble while orbiting in that area. The black hole got the name of Gaia BH3. The proximity of this space object to Earth makes it the second closest to our planet black hole ever discovered. The nearest one is called Gaia BH1. Makes sense. It's hanging out around 1,560 light years away from us. This uncomfortably close neighbor has a mass of around 9.6 times that of the Sun. That means it's way smaller than the newly found black hole. Gaia BH3 is located in the Aquila constellation. From Earth, it seems to have the shape of an eagle. Interestingly, astronomers didn't expect to find a high-mass black hole lurking so relatively close to Earth and remaining undetected for so long. Now look at this marvelous exoplanet. It resembles a giant eyeball hanging out there in space. But it isn't the coolest thing about it. This distant world, identified in 2017, is one of the most promising places for finding life outside our solar system. The exoplanet is called LHS 1140b, and it shows signs of having a global ocean capped in ice. It's that very iris, a huge region around 2,500 miles across, which is constantly gazing at its host star. The planet has a radius of about 1.73 times the radius of Earth, and is 5.6 times as massive as our home planet. The giant eyeball planet orbits much more closely to its star than Earth does. It needs just around 25 days to complete an entire orbit. 
If the star were similar to our Sun, such a distance would definitely be too close for life to appear on the planet. But instead, it's a cool and dim red dwarf. That's why the exoplanet lies in the habitable zone of its star, where it's not so cold that all surface water would freeze and not so close that this water would steam away. At the moment, LHS 1140b looks like the most promising candidate for hosting life in our planetary neighborhood. Solar flares are extremely powerful bursts of electromagnetic radiation that can last from minutes to hours. They occur when there's some magnetic disturbance in the sun. Then, magnetic field lines in the atmosphere of our star get tangled and snap. This releases giant amounts of excess energy, including ultraviolet radiation and intense x-rays. These twisted lines appear in sunspots. Those are darker and cooler regions on the surface of the Sun. They form when magnetic fields that used to hide deep within our star rise up to the surface. As for coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, which are launched by solar flares, they're sent outward into space. They hit planets, satellites, and basically any objects in their path. Those that come across Earth trigger geomagnetic storms, which in most cases result not only in beautiful auroras, but also in power grid failures and satellite malfunctions. All these extreme solar phenomena – CMEs, sunspots, and solar flares – get much more intense during the peak of the Sun's 11-year-long activity cycle. It's known as solar maximum. Right before this event, the Sun steps up its activity. It starts to spit out giant blobs of fiery plasma, emits powerful streams of radiation, and grows planet-sized spots. At first, experts were sure that the current solar cycle would reach its peak in 2025. But judging by recent numerous sunspots, intense solar storms, and some other rare solar phenomena, Solar maximum is likely to arrive sooner than that. This planet is as light as a piece of fluff stuck to your jacket. In the scientific world, its name is WASP 193b, but we'll call it the Cotton Candy Planet. It's located around 1,200 light years from us. We'll never see it with our own eyes, but scientists say the Cotton Candy Planet is pretty much Jupiter's bigger, bouncier cousin. It has an extremely low density. Combined with other factors, like its high temperature and the infrared brightness of its host star, it makes it special. Interestingly, the planet's radius is just 1.46 times the radius of Jupiter, but its mass is a mere 0.139 times of our gas giant. May I have a close-up here, please? Ah, thank you. See how fluffy it is? it would be absolutely impossible to stand on its surface should you ever reach this distant world. It's not often that you can meet something like WASP 193b at a planetary party. Such planets are rare. Their fluffiness might be caused by their planet stars. Those heat them, puffing them up like a marshmallow that's seen too much campfire action. The planet's super-low density makes it a real anomaly among those 5,000-plus exoplanets we have already discovered. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.